Muhammad and Zainab. The story is based on the history of Islam written by Tabari and Ibn Saad and Aisha Ahmed's article titled Sex with Daughters-in-Law, Divinely Ordained in Islam. Sayyid bin Muhammad was a freed slave of Prophet Muhammad and the Prophet then adopted him as his own son. Sayyid then became one of the leaders of Muslim army. Sayyid had already married and have children, but Muhammad married him with other women named Zainab. One day, Muhammad came to Zaid's house and looking for him. Zaid, where are you? Zaid was not at home at the time, and Muhammad found Zainab still on her bed. Oh, Rasulullah, Zaid was not at home right now. Zainab jumped up quickly and excited the admiration of Allah's messenger. Glory be to Allah Almighty who causes hearts to turn. Then Muhammad left the house. Zainab was wondering what did Muhammad mean by his saying. When Zaid came home, Zainab told him what happened. They realized that Muhammad was sexually attracted to Zainab because Zaid loved his adopted father. He was willing to offer his wife to Muhammad. So Zaid came to the Prophet's house. Rasulullah, you are just like my own dad. If you are interested in Zainab, then I will divorce her so that you can marry her. No need to do that. Keep the wife to thyself and fear Allah. I will not touch Zainab again for your sake, Rasulullah. Keep thy wife to thyself and fear Allah. Phew, what a relief. Although saying that actually Muhammad hid his desire. Quran Surah 33 verse 37 And when thou said unto him on whom Allah had conferred favor and thou hast conferred favor, keep thy wife to thyself and fear Allah. And thou didst hide in thy mind that which Allah was to bring to light. And thou didst fear mankind whereas Allah had better right than thou should fear him. Even Saad wrote, when Muhammad was sitting and talking to Aisha, he suddenly was in a trance. After that, he smiled and said, Who will go to Zainab to bring her the glad tidings that God from above gave her to me in marriage? I feel that your Lord hastens in fulfilling your wishes and desires. To make a long story short, Zainab was in Muhammad's bed within a few days. Quran Surah 33 verse 37 So when Zayed had performed the necessary formality of divorce from her, we gave her unto thee in marriage, so that henceforth there may be no sin for believers in respect of wives of their adopted sons, when the latter have performed the necessary formality of release from them. The commandment of of Allah must be fulfilled. In Arab culture, a daughter-in-law was like one's own daughter. Irrespective of whether the son was biological or adopted, the news that the Prophet violated his own beloved son's wife enraged Medinans. They confronted him. Rasulullah, open the door! We have questions for you! MashaAllah, what has happened, my people? O oh, Prophet of Allah, how could you? Of all the people in a pastor of God carrying out a disgusting and despicable act of sleeping with your own daughter-in-law? Your harem is bursting at the seams with young and beautiful wives. On top of that, you regularly take 20% cut from the crop of infidel captured women as your share of booty. Rasulullah, your act is an incest which puts the time-honored noble Arab tradition of adoption to shame. To me, the only noble and honorable act is to follow Allah's orders. And Allah was the one who ordered me to acquire Zainab. Here is the ayah, Surah 33, verse 37. We gave her, Zaid's wife, in marriage to thee, so that there should not be any fault in believers touching wives of their adopted sons. But how can you marry more than four wives? Wouldn't that still be called adultery? Oh, not at all, because I am allowed to have sex with my first cousins without marriage, and Zainab is the daughter of my aunt. Here, here's the ayah, 33, verse 50. O oh, Prophet, we have been brought for thee, the daughters of thy uncles paternal and aunts paternal, thy uncles maternal and aunts maternal, who have emigrated with thee. Prophet, are you sure that Surah 33, verse 50 was not brought to you by Satan, like he brought you the satanic ayahs in Mecca? Oh, I don't get tricked by Satan anymore. I am dead sure that Jibrail brought it to me. Rasulullah, there is another matter which we like to discuss with you. We are told that you have been slain sleeping with Muslims after you sent us on jihad to far places. Is that true? 
Oh, yes, it is. Believing women offer themselves to me in the hope of salvation and special favors from Allah in the hereafter, and Allah has allowed me to fulfill the request by Surah 33, Ayah 50. And also allowed is any woman believer if she gives herself to the Prophet, and if the Prophet desires her to have sex. Uh, however, as you know, I'm a very busy man and cannot fulfill all requests. Besides, my wives get very antsy and jealous when I am with them. They also hate to see the long line of Muslims outside my room daily. Actually, uh, your wives are the ones who informed us of this matter. They said that you get so drained and tired by the time you come to their rooms. You fall asleep right after prayers. Some of your younger wives look so jealous and outraged that we could have easily taken advantage of them like Safwan bin Mu'atal is rumored to have done with the resentful and angry Ayesha on the way back from Mustalik after you dumped her for Juvaria. You yourself believe she did it and had sent her to her dad's house. Allah is aware of that. That is why he has ordered my wives to be segregated and veiled from now on. You are not allowed to come to my home without permission anymore and only allowed to talk to them from behind the curtain if you must. Here is the revelation. Surah 33, Ayah 53. All you who believe, do not enter the house of the Prophet unless permission is given. And when ye ask of them, the wives of the Prophet, anything ask it of them from behind the curtain. And Allah has also given stern warning to my misbehavior. Having wives. Surah 33, Ayah 30. All wives of the Prophet, whoever of you commits an open indecency, the punishment shall be increased to her doubly. Can't we at least marry them when you're dead and gone? Because poor girls look so young and unfulfilled while you're old and ready to kick the bucket. No way. Nobody should touch them even after I'm gone. Well, why not? You do it. Because Allah said so. Surah 33, verse 53. And ye must not marry his wives after him forever. This would be a grave offense to God. Oh, forget about your wives. What about one night stands with our cousins and other Muslims if they offer themselves to us? No one night stands for you. You can sleep with them only if you marry them. Well, why not? You do it. Because one night stands are, uh, is a privilege only for me, not for anyone else. Here is the continuation of Surah 33 verse 50. That is a special privilege for thee, not for other believers. They are only allow the married wives and the right hands but possessions. But Prophet of Allah, does not Surah 33 verse 21 say you are a role model and Surah 3 verse 31 says we are to follow your example if we love Allah. Allah said not to irritate your Prophet. And then those ayahs are really bullshit. But because when you are indulging in incest and adultery, Allah endorses it right away. And when we want to follow you and do the same, Allah calls it adultery and calls for flogging and stoning. Why? Allah said not to irritate your prophet and you are irritating the hell out of me. Surah 33 verse 53. It is not right for you to annoy and irritate the prophet of God. Can't we even ask questions? No. If you ask questions, you will end up getting beheaded. Where does it say that in the Quran? Sh sure it does. Uh, uh, Surah 5 verses 101-102 says, Don't ask questions. You lose faith by asking questions. <laughs> The moral of the above fill in the blanks or anic story. Your brain is like your donkey and Islam is like a mosque. You can ride your donkey anywhere you want, but when you enter the mosque, leave your donkey at the gate.